Such a welcoming little church. Oh, good morning, folks. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. And welcome Beautiful to... Beautiful weather. Welcome to our Easter Sunday service. Oh, thank you. 2021. Here no. you go. 2021. <laughs> Happy Easter to you. Now we're going to have to... Christ is risen indeed. That's better. We'll do it one more time just for a good measure. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We are so glad to have you here with us for this service for Resurrection Sunday or Easter. And we thank you for joining us for this time. Thanks to all the volunteers who have helped out with this. Most of whom this time are from our choir. And we are just thrilled with the work that they have done. And I want to say a special word of thanks to some people that have been behind the scenes. And Naomi Kalpi is one of the people behind this at the beginning of uh, setting it up. And uh, Lynn Stewart has done a lot of work behind the scenes. And Doreen O'Donnell is our director and camera person and gaffer and whatever else. And so we are thankful to them also for this Time that we get to share together apart. We pray God's blessing upon you in this Easter service and this Easter season. And we invite you now to join in and worship and enjoy and praise our risen Lord. Will you please join us for hymn number 365, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
You'll find this if you have Evangelical Lutheran Worship in the front part of the book, page 211. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and, and humbly repent. repent. In your compassion, forgive us our, our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that, that we may live, live and serve you in newness of life. life. Through Jesus Christ, our, our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and has made us alive together with Christ. It is by grace that you have been saved, and it is in the name of Jesus Christ that I declare the forgiveness of sins to all sinners who come repent. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. If you have a bulletin, please join in the litany, reading the bold print. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Rejoice this day, for Christ is victorious. Our God, God has, has conquered, conquered death. death. Rejoice this day, for his tomb is empty. Our, Our God, God has, has triumphed forever. forever. Praise to him who humbled himself. Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord forever. forever. Praise to the suffering servant. Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord forever. forever. Praise to him who triumphed by the cross. Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord, Lord forever. forever. Praise, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord, Lord forever. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Amen. Amen. Come, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join us for the hymn of praise found in the front of your hymnals on page 122. This is the Feast of Victory.
to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you've delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My time is on me, a quiet time of prayer, a quiet time of meditation. He will meet me there. The lonely hours of longing trust The time of simple searching, wanting just to grow. There is enough of God in nature, His power is clearly shown. A man has no excuse for wondering, God in heaven are known. God in heaven are known. My mind I launch a voyage, destiny unknown, discovery and exploration by the Spirit shown. On Mount Sinai I am climbing, then in a desert place, the wind of God is inspiration. Teaching love and grace. There is enough of God in nature. His power is clearly shown. A man has no excuse for wandering. God in heaven I I'd like to have a special time with the children now and young people welcome and thank you for being with us thank you for being part of us we are so glad that you are part of our worshiping community and if anyone's listening that isn't usually with our worshiping community we're really glad that you are joining us now so thank you for listening those many of you might have gotten the egg carton that that um, some nice people from our church assembled for you a bunch of the women got together, I think they were all women, down in the church basement and they got these ready. And in each of the compartments in that carton, there were little eggs like this. And in each of them was something to help us, help you remember the things that led up to Resurrection Day or Easter. And so there were all sorts of things in there to help you remember about Jesus riding into Jerusalem and, the, um, and then being arrested and tried and killed on the cross, crucified, and now comes Easter, Resurrection Day. What do you suppose is in it? Some of you already know, but let's find out, huh? Nothing. Nothing. That is the beautiful thing because it represents for us, it helps us remember, Jesus' tomb was empty. They went looking for him. His body wasn't there. there all that was there was uh, some of his the cloths that they had um, wrapped around him. And then an angel that was there to say, he's not here. He's risen. He told you he would. And he has risen from the dead. Then the next thing that happens is really interesting. The women go, the, the, it was all women that were the first ones to show up at the tomb. There were several of them. And they went away scared. In fact, you get to the end of our reading in Mark's Gospel today, and all it says is they didn't say anyone to any, anything to anybody because they were frightened. 
why do you suppose that would be? You know, we don't have them here to ask them, why were you so afraid? But I think I have some ideas about it. It might have been partly being startled. Have you ever been in a place all alone? Maybe you think you have the house all to yourself. And then somebody says, hello. And I don't know about you, but when that happens to me, I go, ah, because you're startled. You weren't ready for it. You weren't expecting it. And I'm sure that they were startled to find the tomb empty. I'm sure they, they were startled by the angel. I'm sure they weren't really sure whether they thought it was an angel. So they were startled. It took a long time to get used to this idea that she, she's alive. He's really alive. So that was part of it, I think. And another thing, I think, is that they, they hadn't seen him yet. And maybe they didn't really believe it yet. Maybe part of them believed it, part of them didn't. For some of us, that's what the life of faith is like sometimes, that we, we believe and we don't believe. And there's a famous verse in the Bible where someone says to Jesus, Lord, I do believe. Help me in my unbelief. Sometimes it's like that. So there might have been some of that. But in any case, they, were, they, they maybe were thinking, well, we didn't see his body. Someone must have stolen his body away. Maybe something went really wrong here. After they had actually seen Jesus, and after Jesus had had time with them, I think it began to sink in. This is really true. This changes everything. Jesus is really alive. And then maybe peace started to come into their hearts. Jesus said something really interesting, the risen Jesus, to his followers. He said, in, in the Gospel of Matthew, it's the very last thing that we're told about Jesus saying to anybody. He says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Always. He promises to be with us. And you might think, well, how can he do that? How can he be in all those places at once? Well, what he taught us is that through, his, through the Holy Spirit, Jesus' presence is brought to us. So God's Spirit is with us, in us, if we trust in Jesus. Uh, and, and so Jesus is with us in that way. And as we hear the word and we respond to it and we come to faith in him, Jesus comes to us in that way. And in the sacraments, Jesus comes to us. And so he's promised to be with us. And that means we don't have to be afraid. Sometimes it might be like with the women that found the empty tomb. Maybe we'll be afraid anyway. And, you know, I know God understands that. I sure understand it, because I know that I don't need to be afraid. I mean, I know it in my head, but sometimes my heart doesn't come along for the right. I feel afraid anyway. But it helps me, and I bet it will help you, just to remember Jesus is with me, he's promised to be with me, and nothing can stop that, and I really don't need to be afraid. So, I hope that we will all keep remembering that, and especially remember that Jesus has risen from the grave, and that changes everything. Thank you, young people, for listening again. It's so good to have you along on this time, and we rejoice that you are part of us. I'm going to sing a finished translation of Robert Lowry's well-known Easter hymn, Christ Rose, or Low in the Grave He Lay. Like the original song, the finished words declare Jesus' victory over death and the grave. How the sun left at sea, ever
Thanks be to God. We're going to responsibly chant Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2, 14 through 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and have become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. 
The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. He is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you, as of the first importance, what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to cite Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 mothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Today's gospel reading is from Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that might, they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away that stone from us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said, not, they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Here ends the gospel for today. Thanks be to God. So friends, the first thing I want to say is that the story I'm about to tell is a fable. So um, listen to it as a fable, but that doesn't mean it's not true. That means that it conveys the truth in a different way than we would if I were doing historiography or science or something like that. So hear the story which does interact with things that are real, and let it speak to your heart. Let's pray. Through this story, Lord, I pray that you would speak to us and move in our hearts to realize what great things you have done for us. Amen. Amen. If there's one thing the devil hates, it's a human being because Human beings are the apple of God's eye. God loves the little vermin, and it makes him sick. 
And so the devil is always out to try to find a way to slam dunk human beings down. To see if there's some way to maybe fake them out, maybe, maybe fool them into, maybe drag them down into the devil's ways. Some way or another to get rid of the little rascals. That being the case, you can imagine how the devil was feeling one day when the rumor started to float around that the Most High God was going to send his son into the world. And not just into the world, but into the world as one of those little vermin, as a human being. He couldn't really believe it. I mean, it's not playing fair for one thing, and it, it's pretty crazy for another. I mean, who would be that crazy? But the Most High had done some crazy things before. And so it made him nervous, and he wondered, and he bided his time, and he watched. And then one day he overheard it from one of the angelic creatures, one of those crazy ones that didn't side with him. Today is born to you a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That God's attention, a Savior, Christ the Lord. Could this be this thing I heard about? The Most High becoming a human being? A Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and then crying out through the heavens, this he could not miss. It was split in his ears. Glory to God in the highest and peace to people on earth with whom God is well pleased. That made him nervous, and he had to look in the city of David in Bethlehem. Look around in Bethlehem and see. Check out the finest homes. Check out the best hotels. But he wasn't there. What's it about? He's got to get his hands on this little vermin that's supposed to be the Son of God, the Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and see if he can do something. Finally found him in a barn, in a, in a feeding trough. As I say, he doesn't know what to make of the ways of the Most High God. Crazy, crazy things that God would do. There had to be a way to get rid of this little rascal. And the opportunity came. You may have heard of the wise men. They came knocking on the door in Jerusalem. Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star and we have come to worship him. All the devil had to do is whisper in King Herod's ear, King? King? What king? There's only supposed to be one king around here. And, the, and Herod was at work. And he dealt with them slyly and said, Come back and tell me where the child is. I want to worship him too. But the Most High has his ways. And there was one of these moves, you know? Can't tell which ways he's going. And the wise men fake them out. The wise men went by home by a different route and didn't tell them where the child was. Well, that made the devil had to think, and that made, meant that Herod had to think. And the devil whispered in Herod's ear, all you gotta do is wipe out all of them. And so he did. He summoned his troops, had the commander take a detachment and find all the boy babies in the vicinity of Bethlehem that were two years old or younger and just put them to the sword, that's all. That ought to do it. Get rid of a little rascal. But the Most High has other ways. And Jesus had already been taken away to North Africa, to Egypt, until such time as it was safe to be in the Holy Land again. And so, the devil could do some damage. There could be some trouble because this is the sort of world that the Son of God has come into. A world in which there is sorrow and death and 
malice and anger and hatred and other things, blind ambition and whatever else suits the devil's purposes. We know full well that this is the sort of world into which the Son of God has come. And what is the Most High going to do about that? So the devil bided his time, and it seemed like the Son of God was biding his time, too. For about 30 years, it's like nothing happened. The Son of God didn't do anything except, it seemed, make chairs and tables. He lived as a carpenter. And then one day he appeared, about 30 years old, and he was baptized by that troublemaker, John the Baptist, in the Jordan River. And he, he began, right after he was baptized, by going into the desert. In fact, he was driven there by the Holy Spirit. And the devil had another opportunity. He had heard the word, You are the Son of God, with you I am well pleased. What do you do with the Son of God? See if you can drag him down or fake him out or something. And so there was this temptation. Appeal to his appetite. Make these stones into bread. And Jesus said, human beings don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so he thought, well, we'll appeal to Jesus' uh, you know, self-aggrandizement. Jesus, get up on the, the pinnacle of the temple and see, I'm not going to do it, but you know, see if you jump down, if the angels will catch you, you make that wonderful parachute landing and the people will want to follow you. And then Jesus said, you saw this, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So he said, Jesus, uh, he appealed to this time to just raw power, Jesus, it would be a whole lot easier if you just do it my way. I will give you all of the kingdoms of this world. <laughs> all you need to do is bow down to me. And Jesus said, get out of here, Satan. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you fear. And so, every time he tried to take Jesus down, Jesus bounced back. So he looked for another opportunity. Lots of opportunities, actually. Use the Pharisees. Use the Sadducees. Use anybody that doesn't like this Jesus. And have them come up and pretend to be friendly. And come up with questions that will trap this Jesus. But every time they did, he bounced back. He bounced back. He bounced back. They never knew what sort of answer he was going to give. Sometimes he answered their question with another question that left them going, oh. It was amazing. Read the New Testament sometime. You'll see how it worked. So the devil thought, there's only one thing to do now. We're just going to have to take the rascal out. Power of death. We'll see what the Most High's plans, where the Most High's plans go when we get hold of them that way. And so he whispered into the heart and mind of one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, and got him to betray him. And he whispered into the minds of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and said, we've got a plan here. Take him out. Just rub him up. That's all you got to do. And so they did. They arrested him. And they had their kangaroo court of a trial in the, among the religious authorities. And in order to get him down, they said, are you... They put him under oath and said, Are you the Son of God? And under oath, he had to say the truth. And he said, I am. And they said, Well, that's all we need. He's a blasphemer because the only person that has the right to say that is someone who really is the Son of God. And it didn't occur to him that he might really be. And so they were ready to kill him, but they had one other trial that they figured they really wanted it to be done at the hands of the political authorities. Let the dirty, rotten Romans do it. And so they bring him before Pilate. And there was a problem here. Pilate, who was usually putty in the devil's hands, just going whatever he wanted. He didn't even really have to do any work. Pilate just did the work for him. But in this case, P 
Pilate was reluctant, reluctant to kill this Jesus for some reason. I guess the reason was that he couldn't see anything wrong, couldn't see that he had done anything wrong. And so, so they stir up the crowd instead. So the devil, after a while, didn't even have to whisper in their ears, didn't even have to shout in their ears. All they had to do, he, could, he didn't even have to whisper in their ears or into their hearts, all he could shout and they would shout along with glee, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! So Pilate did. And the devil thought, now we'll see what becomes of the Most High God's plans. For they led him out to a place called Golgotha, the skull. And they put him on that instrument of torture, a cross, and they pounded the nails in, and they pounded the nails in, and they pounded the nails in, and they lifted him up on the cross, and he died. That, the devil thought, that is my slam dunk. But it turned out to be one bounce too many. For the harder you take someone like Jesus and pound him into the ground, the higher he bounces. And this time, the devil pushed him with all his might, pushed him all the way down into death, and there was nothing for Jesus to do. to bounce back right through into the sky and to end up at the right hand of his Father in heaven. And so Jesus rose from the dead. Well, there's nothing the devil can do about that, I guess. So I guess he has to return to dealing with those little vermin, the other human beings like you, and like me. See if he can take us out. See if he can fake us out. See if he can take us down. But if we are in Christ, we have a secret weapon. The scripture says in Romans chapter 6, that those who are baptized into Christ are baptized and united with him and united with him in his death, we shall be united with him in a resurrection like his. The devil can tempt us. He can scare us. He can fool us. And he can even take his final weapon, death. But we are in Christ. And what happened to Christ? When the devil tried to bounce him down, he bounced back. And what happened to Christ when the devil took him to death itself? He went through the ceiling. He went to the sky. He rose from the dead. And so if I am in Christ, I am a new creation. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. If you have been baptized into Christ, you have been baptized into his death. And what happened when he died? He rose again. And so, if the devil gives whatever, there is in this world plenty of these things, this world that the Son of God came into. There is hatred, and there is violence. There are people that go out and for no good reason kill other people. There are people that, that are caught up in blind ambition and greed and all sorts of other things like that. There even is disease, even epidemics, even pandemics. And sometimes the hard thing about that 
if you're not one of the people that gets the disease, is just living with the doldrums, just the boredom, the ongoing, was this ever going to end me? But we've still got a secret weapon because Jesus has conquered death. And Jesus has conquered sin. United with him, when the day comes, that death comes to take us, and we are bounced down into the grave itself, that will not be the last word. Someday, Jesus, the risen one, will stand at the graves and say our name, say your name, say the name of your loved ones, and will say, come forth, and we will sail with him right through the ceiling, right into heaven itself, right into the arms of our Savior. Let's pray. We thank you for the victory that is ours in Christ. We pray that you would sustain us in faith and renew us in your love each day. Help us to know that in Christ there is victory. Amen. Hymn number 367, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. Thank you.
one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, from God of God, light of light, true God and true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me for the prayers of intercession found on the back of your bell brief. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw, us to, uh, draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused. Those who are sick or suffering. Those who are dying and those who grieve. You can name them in your hearts or love. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with Benedict the African and all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The good news has been proclaimed. The good news which we have believed. Hold firm to the message proclaimed. The, the message through which we are saved. God sent the message to the people. The, the message of peace by Jesus Christ. The message is spread beginning in Galilee. The message is spreading in all the earth. Thanks be to God for the word of truth. Thanks be to God for the word of life. The word which testifies to Jesus Christ. And, and forgiveness of sins to all who believe in him. Please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our, our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Will you now join us for hymn number 376, Thine is the Glory.
Aleluia.